Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. I'm the senior sound design instructor here at DubSpot in New York City and online. And today we're going to talk about using guitar rig in a live performance kind of setting with Ableton Live. So make sure you have a designated driver because this one's going to knock your socks off. All right, so just to start out, I've got a track of mine here that I'm working on. It's straight from the Chesapeake Bay. Let's take a listen. And I've got guitar rig set up on a return here with a tape echo. So now I've turned both the left and right channels on and I've turned the gate off in guitar rig. And you can hear. One of the cool things about the tape echo here in Guitar Rig is that it's supposed to be an emulation of the Roland Space Echo. And uh, the idea here is that since it uses tape, as we change the playback speed, we wind up actually shifting the pitch of the echoing signal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set this thing here. Let's just make sure it's working. So now I'm going to shift the speed. <laughs> So you guys can hear the speed going up and down, the pitch shifting, which is really, really cool. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to use the incoming signal's volume as a controller to move this speed knob. Now this may sound a little bit foreign to some of you, but rest assured you have heard an effect sort of like this being used, not with an echo, but actually with a filter. An auto filter uses the incoming signal's amplitude to modulate the filter frequency. So, you know, a lot of auto filtering guitar sounds are done that way. You know, that kind of thing. So. We're gonna do it today with uh, a delay. Why not? This is something that I use that's a lot of fun to play with and it can be very expressive uh, if you get things dialed in right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in this module called input level. I'm gonna put it above. And what input level does, and you can see it very clearly, I'll, I'll bypass the tape echo for a moment. Uh, what input level does is it senses the input level of the signal. Notice as I turn this up, input level starts to move. Now we can change the overall volume of the incoming signal so it's more sensitive. And then we can change the attack and decay here. We can offset it if we want to. I'm just going to leave that at zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this assign thing, I'm going to click and drag, and I'm just going to drop it on to speed. All right. And so now it has a range and I can go ahead and drop this down and I can change its overall modulation range. Okay. And right now it's below because the input level is down kind of low, but we could always offset it if we wanted to. Okay. I'll let you use your taste on that. And now what you're going to hear is that as I push up the send level, the input level gets pushed a little bit. It's actually going to move the tape speed here with the tape echo and change the overall pitch of the echoing signal. Now we can change the echo volume here. I just uh, would recommend that you watch out. Things can get kind of loud. You may end up clipping, especially in a live performance situation. Uh, you don't want to be clipping. Well, you don't ever want to be clipping, but you want to really safeguard yourself so that in a live performance situation, you're not having to make adjustments. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on and here we go. Now let's push it back up again. Pull down the decay. And now if you don't want the feedback to be going on for quite so long, you can always go ahead and pull that down. If you want to slow it down a little bit, you can just change the basic setting where the knob actually is. Maybe I pull it down here. There's a lot that you can do. And one thing I also recommend in addition to having a knob on your controller to do these uh, delay throws with the send here is having something that's controlling this feedback. That's something that can be really helpful because you can really push it super hard if you want to sometimes. And that can be really great. Yeah, 
You see what I mean? And then get your echo volume adjustments. It's a little bit loud here, but I want to make sure you guys can hear what I'm doing. Uh, once you get your adjustments correct, this can be a really fun technique to use, especially for buildups, things that are happening in the background. It's always nice to have something very expressive that you can play with those knobs that can sort of ride off of the general dynamic level of the music. It's very fun and it's really cool because you can make things that are really expressive and that really tell the narrative of the music that's happening behind it. And also remember, you can use this input level module with just about anything you want. I've used it with everything from a filter to, as you can see, an echo to using it with a harmonic synthesizer. It's a lot of fun. I highly encourage you to experiment and always keep it musical. Once again, this is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. I'm the senior sound design instructor and course designer here at DubSpot in New York City and online. I'll catch you next time. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.